Some of you have noticed that there has been a little bit of a lack of AMD discussion this week at CES, especially since they had their keynote with some really high-level teaser Ryzen uh, 2 or Zen 2 Ryzen 3rd Gen, which is weird. The 3 is the 2 in this case. But I digress. They also talked about the new Radeon 7, which is the 7 nanometer version of Vega. Well, some might say we saved potentially the best for last. First, we gotta thank our sponsor, and of course that is Corsair and the Corsair One High Performance Desktop PC. The i140, i160, and i180 can be found in the link in the description below. So one of the things that's really hard to do at these trade shows where you get very high level information, very locked down demos, is uh, a true opinion on a product. So we're gonna kind of hold off on that, but there's a discussion I wanna have in this video a little bit later on, so please stick around, because I really do wanna see your comments down below. But before we kind of talk about performance, they do have some demos here. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of take a quick look around the card and what's different from Vegas 56 and Vegas 64, which has a very similar design. Obviously, the most major change, as you can see, is they went with a triple fan design. By kind of getting rid of the blower style cooler, and we saw Nvidia do this too, but obviously they have a dual fan solution, this is a triple fan. By just truly dropping the blower style cooler and going with a multi-fan so solution like this, you can get more power and a lot more control over thermals. Uh, by doing this, obviously. As you can see though, they also have a very dense fin array in terms of the amount of heat sink uh, fins that are on this card. By doing so, they've greatly improved the thermal capacity of the cooler. Uh, I saw a lot of comments back when Vega 56 and 64 launched that they loved the raw aluminum, brushed aluminum look. The back plate, in my opinion, is one of the best back plates on the market in terms of aesthetics. The only thing that's different between this card and the actual production card, because this is an engineering sample, is they've removed the logo from the back. So it's gonna be a very clean aesthetic. Looks pretty much identical to the Vega 64 um, with the black bracket right here. We've got our black uh, bracket on the back. And this is not a dual BIOS card though, although the Vega 64 and 56 did have dual BIOS, this one does not appear to. I don't see any switches anywhere on this. Um, but I mean, you can still pretty much overclock this card, play with fan curves and all that stuff using the Adrenaline software. Now it's got dual eight pin power plugs on the back. So um, you could definitely have to pair this thing with a pretty decent power supply, but you should do that anytime you're shopping top tier anyway, in my opinion, go more power than you think you need. That way, obviously you uh, aren't running into any issues there. Um, but other than that, it still is very reminiscent and derivative of the very clean and very minimalistic approach to the design of the cooler and the graphics card as a whole from Vega 64. Now in terms of specs, it's actually a uh, not only a die shrink in terms of 7 nanometer, but it's also a stream processor shrink. So it's got 3840 stream processors, that's hard to say, stream processors. So instead of 4,096 stream processors, this has 300, or 380, yeah, it's really reduced, no, 3,840. Um, it's also instead of 64 CUs, hence the Vega 64, it's got 60. So it's kind of interesting that overall, the die is like kind of shrunk in all those aspects, but the performance is up. In fact, they are boasting a uh, RTX 2080 level of performance in obviously standard games and stuff, not RTX. That's a whole different discussion to have on a different day when we get more hands-on on this. Um, but it has a, got an increased boost clock and turbo clock, or boost clock, turbo clock, base clock across the board. That's where they're getting a lot of their performance improvements. Um, so we've got 16 gigabytes of HBM2 on here, up from the eight gigabytes found on the Vega 64, and up quite a bit from the four found on the old Fury and Fury X. But um, you know, it's one of those things that's like, does more screen buffer make sense? Well, I guess uh, that depends on who you ask. Obviously, the game developers would love to have as much screen buffer as possible because then that becomes less of a limitation. And the, one of the launch partners for this card is The Division 2. And they've got the developers here on site talking about the game, uh, obviously some of the technologies involved. Like, it's got improved asynchronous compute. Um, but they've even said that they have seen in 4K, which has definitely been making a push over the last couple of years to be more mainstream, that it can use you know 10 gigabytes, 11 gigabytes of screen, uh, screen buffer pretty easily. But with its 4,096-bit uh, memory bus, you can have up to one terabyte per second throughput on the memory. So memory is obviously a huge focus with, uh, with Radeon graphics. Now let's go ahead and head on over here to the Division 2 demo. We'll do a quick demo on that and then just a very quick food for thought discussion at the end. This is a demo of the Division 2 and what kind of really sucks about this is they didn't activate Windows. It's not activated. 
The problem with demos is the fact that they're extremely locked down, they're not final, so I hate to, I, I always reserve opinion of anything that is not final until it's final because it's not fair to anyone involved when you have early access stuff because things aren't optimized, the title obviously has some room for improvement, we're not going to see this reach retail until March. So yeah, reserve any of those opinions on performance until things are done. It even says right here, work in progress. The first thing I wanted to see, well, what are the specs? What are they running at? Well, we know they're running 4K, but if you go to the settings, you can see all you can do is change controls. You can't change any of the settings. So I have no idea what the anti-aliasing level is. I have no idea what type of AA is running. I have no idea what like the post-processing effects are. But anyway, in terms of perceived smoothness, it, it is very smooth. But I would expect nothing less at this level of graphics with uh, this type of frame buffer in obviously a launch part partner title. So that's where we got to see how it handles other titles of games that are pre-existing rather than ones that are designed with the card in mind during development. Now let's go and talk about something that uh, I've I intentionally reserved this video till the end of the week. We had this meeting with AMD much earlier in the week. And I basically said, I, I want to reserve my opinion on this one until I have the card in hand, obviously. But two, I wanted to really watch what the audience was saying. I was very curious because everyone was expecting, because of I think unnecessarily unfair leaks, Navi right now. And that's obviously not what this is. This is a, uh, this is a generational improvement to an existing product. And because of that, a lot of people I think were being extremely unfair to AMD by saying, well, no, that I thought we were getting a $250 card that was supposed to destroy the uh, RTX 2070. You may or may not see that this year in 2019. But what I was really concerned with, uh, and I wanted to see what people were saying, is about realistically the price increase. This is a price increase versus Vegas 64. Vegas 64, unfortunately, was plagued with production cost issues versus retail pricing, and it was very cutthroat with uh, the Pascal series from NVIDIA. NVIDIA launched the 1070 Ti right around the same time intentionally to fill that gap uh, at that performance uh, per dollar figure, which made it very difficult for Vega to really kind of get legs and become you know, very widely adopted because supply was impossible. It was hard to get a card, it really was. And then get, you get to buy it with bundles. And, and so a lot of people were really mad at AMD uh, you know, about a year and a half ago. So I wanted to see if people were just as upset at this, in pr this price increase of about $100. But at the end of the day, you are getting something tangible for it that you would be able to experience at the time of launch versus being a technological thing that you're expecting that for that extra money with NVIDIA where you got to see titles come online taking advantage of a hardware level improvement where this is something developers could update, have backwards compatibility with old titles to take advantage of some of these newer technologies, you know, the asynchronous compute improvements and all that sort of stuff. So I'm really curious as to how you guys feel. Is the $100 a deal breaker for you for this card at 700 being pretty much one of the most expensive AMD mainstream cards that's ever been developed, or are you guys okay with it? Uh, that's just food for thought. I want to know what you guys feel. If you are upset at one brand for a price increase but not another, it comes down to whether or not the price increase gives you value. So that's where I want you guys to chime in down below. Anyway, here we are at uh, CES 2019 wrapping up our show with the AMD booth. And I'm excited. I'm excited to see where this goes because I've preached it a million times. We need the competition. Obviously, AMD has been competing in the CPU space and really, really getting back that market share, which is great. It's great for all parties. We need the same thing on graphics. So guys, tell me what you think in the comments down below. And as always, thank you to Corsair for sending us here for CES 2019. That's a wrap for us. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one. I'm going home.